Today, we're back with another Deep Oaken speedrun. This time, against one of arguably the most difficult bosses in the entire game. The rules are simple. Create a fresh new character and beat Maestro as fast as possible without any pre-run setup, which means no passing down items, no banker, or assistance from other players. So with that explained, make sure to subscribe if you enjoy these videos since I want to aim for 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And with that shameless plug out of the way, let's quickly get into the run. Starting off with character creation, I choose the Gale Breath of Two Minutes always. Two flaws that don't affect the speedrun so that we can pick up the Autodidact and Survivalist boons, and click on the Echoes tab to enable both the Destin and Vow of Thorns modifiers. Vow of Thorns gives us a much higher rate of experience in exchange for some downsides that are only extremely bad if we do end up dying. And Destin picks all of our talents, mantras, and attributes randomly for us whenever we power up which saves on average 20 seconds every time we level up than if we didn't have it. Probably the biggest change compared to all my previous speedruns was choosing to use a medium weapon instead of heavy weapons this time around. And while heavy weapon is overall better for PvE and throughout the entire run, medium weapon is a lot better for Maestro over heavy since you can keep him in combos easier. And there's even a tech with it that allows us to get free damage, which I'll talk about later. For now though, I decided to spend all of my starting points into strength and agility for this run in hopes of unlocking some good talents later, and we start the speedrun with the Lone Warrior Origin at the Trial of One, the best place for breezing through the early game entirely. I make some quick work of the first and second trials, invest 20 Gale Breath to unlock some good abilities, and run over to the Shrine of Solitude so that we can start getting some good abilities to kill mobs quickly. Now realistically, there are three mantras that are good for the entire run. That is Gale Punch, Gale Lunge, and Twister Kicks, since they both work effectively against mobs and humanoids. However, we still want the Tornado Mantra for everything up until we start to fight the bosses. However, um, I didn't get any of these. My first two abilities were Gale Trap and Heavenly Wind, which was not the best sign of a good run. It made killing the angels only a tiny bit slower surprisingly, but it made Enforcer over 20 seconds slower than it usually would have been. As he uses backup strategy where I force him to use his spin move by backing out of his range, and then I just parry and swing through that until he dies, which isn't the biggest deal in the world, since there are plenty of spots to save time later in the run. And I just wanted to get more runs going than anything. I also somehow managed to get strong left without using the Shrine of Solitude or anything, which is a pretty uncommon occurrence. But regardless, it's one of the more viable mantras when it comes to fighting some of the bosses coming up soon. If you look right here, this is the complete list of the mantras that are going to be good to use for the Maestro fight, with the stats that I'm going. So, it will definitely come in handy later. Oh yeah, I should quickly talk about the stats I invested, since we're coming up near the end of the trial of one site bit, and I'll probably get comments asking me about it. I decided to go 75 medium weapons so that I could alloy a weapon later. And the other stats I went just for convenience, and also so I could get some good damage modifier talents. Speed Demon is especially a big one for this one. It's basically just a free 30% damage buff to all my M1s, as long as I have a speed boost. Coming up to the last trial, I finally got one of the good mantras needed. I was able to invest 75 medium weapon, pretty much, and cleared the final trial relatively easily in just over 5 minutes. And so, the real run begins. After leaving the trial of one, I'm able to immediately power up after and get Gale Punch, Another good mantra for the run. At this point, we'd pretty much have to take the exact same route as you normally would when speedrunning the Duke, since in order to even fight Maestro, there are four, oh well, now three requirements, and defeating Duke is one of them. We head to the top of Minitrusia in the spot where a hive mech always spawns, and have to server hop for a little while since another person already killed it. I take quite a bit of damage when fighting it by accident, and loot the big chest after killing the hive mech. While we're at Minitricia though, I'm looking out for two different medium weapons while looting the chests. The Katana or Shotel, with both having fast critical attacks and being able to upgrade them with alloys later. Fortunately, I get a Katana from a chest after killing one of the Ministry Necromancers, and after server hopping and killing the Hive Mech for the second time to get more loot, we have more than enough levels and loot that we can sell for the rest of the speedrun. Instead of resetting back to spawn or heading back as usual, I utilize a glitch that forces my character to reset faster. If you freeze your game midair, count to 10 seconds, and then unfreeze your game, the anti-cheat will detect that you're flying and automatically void you, 
allowing us to go back to our spawn 20 seconds faster than if we'd reset normally. Which probably might get me banned, but hey, anything to save time, I guess. We sail all the way to Etrus. I forget to pick up Destroy Man 3. Sorry. And now we can start the Duke quest line. In order to even start the quest, though, we need to have good reputation with the Etria faction in the first place. Thankfully, there's just Lumberjack that allows us to exchange wood for some positive reputation with Etria. So by selling all the equipment that we got to the Antiquarian near him, we can go over to the Blacksmith, get some basic armor while we're here, and buy a whole stack of wood for extremely cheap and trade it into the Lumberjack to get the positive rep needed. While I only need to turn in around 60 wood in order to start the quest normally, we need to turn in around 250 wood in order to get ally reputation with Etria. Another requirement to fight Maestro that we might as well knock out while we're here. After that, we talked to Kenneth and the Librarian in order to figure out more information on the Lord Regent. Spoiler alert, Kenneth dies. Then the guard tells us that we have an audience with the Lord Regent. And just like that, we have a key to Duke's Manor. I use the same glitch to reset my character again quicker, allowing me to spawn directly at the boat that we used to sail over to Etrus earlier. Sail to a shortcut in Upper Arisia that allows us to glide directly over to the Burning Stone Gardens. Kill those golems so we can level up and potentially get some better mantras. I did not. And then we can run forward and glitch through this big gate by rolling, pressing space, and freezing our game at the exact same time. We now arrive at the Duke's Manor, open it with the key we got earlier, clear with some of his henchmen standing in the way, which takes a painfully long time since we have to execute all of his minions one by one. And we enter the dungeon by the 24 minute mark. Going into the dungeon, there are two stronger golems that we have to defeat in order to open this gate and progress. However, fighting both of them simultaneously is a losing battle. We're still pretty weak at this point. So instead, I bait every enemy over to the statue, stand on the very bottom part of the statue, and hit them over and over until they both die. Ideally with Tornado or other moves that can hit, but the only move that hits is Gale Trap in my kit, so we have to slash them both repeatedly. I eventually kill them both, and now we can run past the rest of the monsters in order to get to the boss fight. On the way, I also opted to bait this golem down so it can't climb back up, and in the same move, bait another weak enemy into Duke's arena so that we can use it as a health back. Now, we start the fight. His first phase is an auto parry shield phase, where we have to deal enough posture damage in order to break it. If he ever uses strong left during this phase, we'll be forced to parry trade with him since we can't hurt him. Otherwise, we will try and sneak in as many hits as possible before parrying his next attack. After a minute of being an idiot in parry trading with him, we break his shield and immediately start pressuring him as much as possible. Now, to be completely honest with you, I've never really been great at this boss fight normally, being reliant on the minions he would summon randomly for health bags, but there was always a chance he would never summon them. So, I decided to do a whole bunch of practice in order to learn how to fight him whilst taking the least damage possible, since we really can't afford to be hit too much in this fight. Thankfully, the practice paid off when it came to this fight, and it seemed to be going great considering that I still had more than half my health left. However, disaster struck. I was mid-swing when he used his counter, and even though I tried to miss my swing on purpose, I turned too much and there went a whole chunk of health. And not even 6 seconds after that, he used one of his rarest and deadliest attacks that I've only seen a couple times out of the hundreds of times that I fought him. I tried to parry as soon as I heard the sound cue, but it was way too early. I got immediately guard broken, but somehow I didn't instantly die from it. Things were looking bad though. I knew the Duke's health was pretty low at this point, but I really could not afford to get hit again. Thankfully, he would soon falter, and I was able to grip him, beating the Duke in just under 29 minutes making sure to loot the chest on our way out. So now with two out of the three Maestro requirements met, we only have to finish the Lost Sibling quest. Exiting the dungeon, I immediately use a Prolipone alloy to upgrade the Katana to an Alloyed Katana, taking advantage of the fact that your first boss killed on a character will always give you a Prolipone alloy. Now, while we could rush for the third requirement and go straight to Maestro, we need to give a Gale Stone to one of the Lost Siblings in Upper Arisia for this to happen, and... Gale stones happen to be quite a pain to get. So instead, I decided to get as many power levels as possible, taking advantage of Vow of Thorns to make myself stronger for the Maestro fight. By killing some of the golems nearby and having killed the Duke, we have more than enough EXP to hit power 15 by investing purely into Gale and Strength. Hit power 16 by using our spare autodidact points at a campfire. 
Click recall mantra and leave the campfire. Click yes to recall a mantra, which then brings up the auto didact menu without being at a campfire. Interact with the Shrine of Blasphemy whilst investing a stat point to hit power 17. Gain another 3 power levels by spamming one arrow keyboard. And hit power 20 in just under 33 minutes. The maximum level. A Voidwalker shows up right after on queue, in which case we just leave the game and join another server. And now we can begin the trek for a Gale Stone. There are only two NPCs at Arisia that we can rely upon to obtain Gale Stones. Etrian soldiers in white cloaks, which have a near 100% chance of dropping them, and Legion soldiers, which have a pretty low drop rate. Both of these can spawn randomly from events, which we can't always rely upon. However, there is a camp where Legion soldiers always respawn. So by heading back down to Lower Arisia, locating this building, and dropping straight down whilst cancelling fall damage with Wind Passage, we end up in a small cave below Arisia with two Legion Soldiers that we can kill for a very low drop chance of getting a Gale Stone. Luckily though, I didn't have to server hop too many times before I finally got a Gale Stone. With a Gale Stone acquired, all we do now is head all the way back up the cave to Upper Arisia. Being able to take this shortcut to the Burning Stone Gardens, just barely, and head all the way forward to a house over a cliff, where we give the Gale Stone by interacting with the lost sibling through the wall. Now, all we need to do is sail to Isle of Vigils, sell more of our equipment to upgrade our Gale Mantras to level 4, finish the lost sibling quest, and finally meet all of the requirements to face Maestro in a duel after 41 minutes. At this point, it seemed like I was going to defeat Maestro in less than 45 minutes. I had the most preparation out of every run, managing to somehow get 6 proficiency despite having random attributes picked, level 4 Gale Mantras, and nearly 400 health. However, if you know anything about Maestro, is that this guy hits hard. Master's Flourish and Floating Passage, his two most deadly attacks, taking 20-30% to 30 of health if I wasn't careful. Considering I sometimes struggle fighting him on a completely max build and hadn't even finished a speedrun of this once, doing all this in under 45 minutes without dying made the stakes extremely high. However, I did a lot of practicing for this moment, and now, I had no choice but to step out of force field and start the fight. I didn't even really know what to say. Everything felt right, and yet right near the end, when I was about to defeat him, he quickly used two of his deadliest moves, and I couldn't react in time to save myself. I didn't even pause the timer in the menu, since I really felt that their run was dead. My chances of killing him in under 45 minutes were over. I still tried to escape the depths to at least beat him in under an hour, but then... I remembered I had Vow of Thorns. My trial was a lot harder. I was out of patience and luck, playing recklessly and taking a lot of damage. I forgot how much health some of these mobs even have when they're corrupted, and severely underestimated them. In the span of no time, I went from full health all the way to one hit from death. Right then and there though, I decided that I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't get another opportunity like this for a while. I would at least die trying.
Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Oh my god. Oh, it's not very good, but I guess it's done. Uh, so why, why couldn't I just lock in the first time, man? <laughs> you know what? We, fin we finally did it, at least. Ah, oh, jeez. Hey, thanks for watching until the end. I just want to say first off that this video would not have been possible without Basket Slipper's guide on Maestro. If you struggle with the Maestro boss fight, I highly recommend checking his guide out yourself, linked below in the comments. This run was quite a personal pain of mine and somewhat scuffed. Uh, no, I won't bother to retime it or try for a lower time since it's not even a speedrun category. And at the end of the day, my videos are made for your entertainment. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. And, um, I think I'm forgetting something. Ah, shit.